So, uh, last part of notes that we talked about here uh, was, oh, I don't know if anybody can see that. The last part of uh, notes, again, we're kind of a history lesson here. And now what we transition into is kind of the science behind what we know with the um, what we know with the how we got to the pieces and parts of the atom here. So let me let me transfer this camera because it's not very good. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So anyways, we get through these series of experiments. And the cool thing about this, it may not seem like a big deal to you, but electricity becomes available. All of a sudden, our world of how many and how much uh, experiments we can do really expands. So we start out here with this thing called a cathode ray. Cathode ray, just think of it as a glass tube. They suck everything out, so it's a vacuum. And then they put these, what they call electrodes, and they tie it to a source of electricity. It's basically, hey, it's flowing electricity, and it goes through one end to the other. Okay? Um, they knew a little bit about electricity. Again, this is the onset of electricity. So they're starting to tie, hey, this is a piece of matter, and it probably has something to do with the atom. They also knew it carried a negative charge. So again, we'll learn here in a second, negative charge equals our electron, but they don't know this quite yet. Um, questions on this? Anybody need it? I got you. Anybody still need it? Okay. Um, moving on here, uh, this dude croaks. What he finds is this. The negatively charged particle can be affected by magnets. So what's he, what's he doing or what he does with this cathode ray? Is he takes a magnet that he knows that specific charge, and he puts it up against the sides of this cathode ray. And because they knew this electricity had this negative charge, he's able to bend this particular source of electricity. So again, he bends it up, he bends it down, um, and he is able to uh, find out more specifically about this negatively charged part, and he finds the electron. So now this is one part of Dalton's atomic theory that is proven not true. There are smaller pieces and parts of the atom. Remember Dalton said, hey, we got the atom, that's it. We can't go any, any smaller. Well, we can't go any smaller and retain, uh, and retain the properties of that element, but we can't have smaller pieces and parts. Questions on this? Anybody need it? Okay. Moving on here, uh, we get to more scientists. And, I, and I, again, I just want you to notice the time frame. This guy, Thompson, uh, learns about the cathode ray experiments, and he wants to do even more detailed experiments. This is happening relatively quick, quickly. Um, almost all of this stuff that we talk about today happens within 10 to 20 years, which I know may seem like a long time, but this is actually a very, very quick process, especially in the time where uh, there's no internet or things of that nature. All this is happening quickly. Anyways, getting to the science of this thing, what he does is he's going to do more detailed experiments with that cathode ray. So specifically, he's taking a charge. He can charge up this magnet in some way, shape, or form. And he's able to 
find its charge to mass ratio. Again, he uses his fancy calculations because he has this magnet specifically dialed to a, a certain degree or a certain power, and he's able to, to understand, hey, this negative charge, I can find this charge to mass ratio. So uh, the, the big thing here is that he proves there are smaller pieces of the atom. Again, this small piece, what we know now is the electron. He also, probably the most important thing here, he creates this plum pudding, or sometimes you call this the chocolate chip model. And essentially he says, hey, this off-white orb is a positive charge because he knew that atoms were neutral and he knew that there's electrons. So to balance out the negative stuff, we have to have positive stuff. And he said this whole thing, if you imagine the dough in a, a chocolate chip cookie, would be the positive charge. So he thought it equally was uh, dispersed. And it's all because he really couldn't find that specific positive charge. Questions? Anybody need, <laughs> excuse me, need it? All right, uh, Milton, uh, he goes even further. So he takes the calculations that Thompson was able to find. Again, I'm not worried about the, the calculations. They're over my head, um, so I'm, I'm not really concerned about those. But he uses this apparatus. He calls it the oil drop experiment. Essentially here, he's taking more detailed looks at the uh, electron and doing more math with it. And so what he is able to understand is the specific charge of an electron. Now there's an actual calculation, <coughs> uh, I talk about it briefly in AP chemistry. All, all we need to know is, hey, electron has a negative one charge. That's essentially his big findings. Now, the next question is, hey, we know this stuff is neutral. Most atoms are. We know we have an electron which is negatively charged. Where is that positive charge? At this point, we don't know about the positive charge. Um, questions, anybody? Need it? Right. All right, so Rutherford. Rutherford is uh, really fundamental in the, the parts of the, the atom or finding the parts of the atom. So he sets up an experiment specifically to find out that positive part. And so what he does, he shoots these things called alpha particles or alpha radiation at this really thin sheet of gold. Imagine aluminum foil, but you have pure gold. And so he takes uh, Rutherford's model and he says, all right, Rutherford, if you, have, if you have all of this positive charge or this positive orb, then most of these beams should go straight through because uh, if the positive charge is, is barely there, I'll see very, very uh, small deflections. And he was able to detect this deflection here with this apparatus. Um, you got to remember Rutherford is probably the top scientist of the time. Um, so he had all the top equipment and the, the top end stuff. Questions? Anybody need it? Yeah. All right, so now what he got was really significant. So again, he shoots these alpha particles, which these arrows on the alpha particles, you can just think as a positive charge, okay? And he expects using J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model or that chocolate chip cookie dough model, he expects most of these positive charges to go through. And we want to. These are his expected results. Hey, I'm going to go shoot it through. I'm going to prove that Thompson's model was correct. But what he gets is this he gets some of these particles that almost have a, a 180 degree turnaround. And so what happens after this is he's able to say, Thompson's model was incorrect. 
the positive charge is not in this off-white circle or this off-white gray here. It has to be totally centrally located at that uh, particular center. Again, the, the, the big thing here is we found the positive charge, and the positive charge is all in one center spot of an atom. Question? Do I need it? Okay, so we tie everything together. They find the electron. Again, they've done a bunch of math work. They've done a bunch of work on the electron because they knew electricity had that negative charge. They did a bunch of experiments out of that. The other thing is Rutherford said, hey, your model cannot be correct. And that's all because you have this center with all of this positive charge. So what happens here is Rutherford develops that next model of the atom, where the plus sign stands for our positive proton. Our N is our neutron, which we'll get to here in a second. And then this is located in the center. Around the outside, <coughs> excuse me, around the outside, is those electrons. So again, the center, we call this the nucleus. And then within the nucleus, you have a proton, which is that positive charge. And that's what Rutherford found. He said, hey, it's all in the center. The neutron, which we'll get to here in a second, how they find that. And then on the outside, there are those electrons. The other thing here is that Rutherford's experiments confirms Dalton's and Democritus thinking of, hey, there's empty space. Again, kind of mind blown, how can we have empty space in between those electrons and those protons? But we do. Question from Anita. We, all right. Ah, yeah, so I kind of jumped ahead here, but again, Summing up this result, Rutherford is able to prove that we have this positive particle. They knew it should exist, but he's able to say, hey, it's there. I'm going to call this thing a proton, and it cancels out that charge of an electron. So simply put here, uh, with Millikan, he said, hey, an electron has a quote unquote negative one charge, more specific than that. A proton has to balance that out so we can be neutral. We have a plus one charge. And it's located in that center. Maybe I should be more specific here. Proton and neutron are in the center, which we refer to as the nucleus. Now, one problem they ran into is they said, hey, uh, electrons have almost no mass. And these protons, if we add up all the protons, it still doesn't equal the correct mass. So what they're able to do, they run another experiment, uh, this dude by the name of, of James Chadwick, and he's able to find this other piece inside the nucleus. Big takeaway here, this is another important part here, our atom is composed of three basic parts, electron, protons, neutrons, which we've all talked about before. Now, there is further research now that there's even smaller parts from this. We don't really get into that. Question? They might need that. Yeah. All right. Good. So here's the big thing here is that most particles in a, well, I'll, yeah, let me revise that. A neutral particle has equal protons and electrons. But it also has to have those neutrons to be to be having the correct mass. Yeah, to have the correct mass. The other thing too is we get this spherical shape. Remember, with Dalton's theory, they said, "Hey, dude, we need a model. Like, I need a picture to be able to depict this." So this two-dimensional model is it totally correct? And the way they figured out that spherical shape was through um, 
Rutherford's experiments. It's because of those deflections. Again, he's able to do some fancy math and able to find all of that business there. The other thing here, the other question I got was, okay, so there's empty space. Why are these electrons basically, uh, better words here, they're, they're essentially attached or they're associated with this nucleus? Same reasons as we have magnets. Positive and negative charges attract one another. The other thing here, they say, hey, electrons really don't make up any mass. It's all from your protons and neutrons. And then we're basing everything right now on a neutrally charged atom, meaning proton equal neutron, or positive equal uh, negative. All right, questions? Anybody need this? All right, so I'll pause this or stop this somehow. Stop recording.